Hello, my name is Anthony Shivkumar, and in this video, we are going to talk about how we can use GCOV or a coverage tool in order for us to analyze how much, how, whether all of our code is executing or if not. And this can help us, you know, write unit test cases and also to notice whether the code that we're writing, uh, is it actually being executed? You know, you might have an if else statement. There's maybe a branch uh, where the code is never being hit and you might want to know whether it's, whether, whether you're running through it or not. And, th and with the help of the previous tutorial where we did about profiling and a combination of using coverage tools and profiling tools, you can really optimize your code for better performance, better usability, and making sure that whatever you're writing, uh, everything is executed. So your file size is also smaller. And especially if you're dealing with embedded systems, you want to make sure that every piece of code is actually working and it's being used. You don't want to have code that is there, but it's not being used because it's just going to make your file size bigger. So depending on where and what you're doing, uh, having more test coverages can really help you out. So today we're going to focus on GCO or you know, coverage. So in this particular case, I'm just going to use the example that I did in the previous, uh, uh, in the previous tutorial, which is uh, the GProf tutorial. And what we have over here, I'm just going to go and do an LS. I'm going to basically do my uh, main.c. And in my main.c, what do I have over here? I have my time waster and I also have my Fibonacci series, which is basically I'm counting till 22. And in this 22, I am basically, you know, calculating the num the Fibonacci of the previous two numbers. And those numbers are calculated by calculating the Fibonacci of three to th those two numbers till you reach zero and one and zero, the value of at zero is zero, the Fibonacci of zero, zero, the value of Fibonacci of one is one, and then the Fibonacci of two is one because it's the addition of zero plus one. And in here, we're just, I'm just going to split my screen. I'm going to show you how you can compile for coverage. So I've got a make file over here. And in my make file, I have something, I've created a variable in my make file called C coverage. And in order for you to compile your program that has the ability for you to, to figure out the coverage, uh, how much of your code is actually being executed, you need to have in two basic types of uh, flags. So you need to have the profile arc flag and you want to have the profile test uh, test coverage. And what this flag does, the test coverage flag basically shows you how many times that particular line of code is executed. So once we compile it and then we and we run it and we run the coverage, you see, you know, what that flag does. It tells you, you know, how many lines, how many times this particular line of code has been, you know, called. And if you and the and the profile arc uh, uh, flag basically tells you how many times, you know, the branching has been done or different ways in which, you know, your code can be branched. So if you have an if else statement and, you know, there's multitudes of, you know, and you have, you know, different ways of, you know, reaching a particular function, it's able to tell you under, you know, what was the hierarchy that came before you executed that function. So here we don't have any of that sort. We just have a very simple program and let's see how it works. You know, let's get started. So I'm just going to close my make file. I'm going to do a make clean. And it's going to remove, and here we have just my make data, uh, my main and make file. And this was the performance data, which, which we can actually remove. This was the perf data that we, um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click make. And as you can see, I am compiling with the, with the profile arcs and profile and the test coverage that main. So let's click the LC, LC and we have basically a uh, LS uh, that's listing what I've, what, what is generated. And you can see it's generated the uh, main.gcno, main.o, and uh, the a dot out. So I got to run my a dot out before I basically see what the G cow can do, G coverage can do. So now we're running this whole thing. So now if I do a LS and if I do a G cow on my main.c file, it basically tells me that I have executed 100% of my code uh, out of the 22 lines. If I see how many lines are out here, so if I can put set number, uh, the amount of, uh, or out of the 22 lines of actual code, it has basically uh, executed 100% of my, of every line. All right. So now once that we have run the gcow.main.c, it has, it will generate a file called the main.c.gcow. And from here, we'll try to open it up. So when we click on the open it up, we'll basically be able to see 
exactly how many times each each line has been executed. So this part is basically the header file uh, and the initialization. And then it says, hey, this has been called 40 times. This has been called, you know, 20 million times, which makes sense because we're doing it 50 million, 5 million into say 40 times. So it's like, you know, five into um, four is around, you know, five fours are 20. So you're looking at, yeah, it's, it's, yeah that makes sense around, you know, 200,000, 200 million times. And each of this function is called 40 times. Uh, this is a comment. This is called 43 times. These are called 42 times. And that's how cool this is. So let's try to create a function that is not, that we're not going to, uh, that we're not going to call. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically, um, create a function over here, which is called avoid, um, no coverage. And I'm just going to say, In a, I'm not, I'm not even going to do this. I'm just going to say printf coverage, not coverage hit. Yeah, something of that sort. And I'm not going to basically uh, call this function. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to do a uh, clear my screen. I'm going to do a make clean. And we have pretty much I'm going to remove all the uh, remove slash dot G. So we basically have main dot C and make file. I'm going to run make. And uh, we have uh, an error over here. We have an int print F make. All right. And now what we have is a dot out main dot C main dot GCNO. And what I'm going to do is do a G call of uh, I need to run my file first. So I'm going to do a dot slash a dot out and it'll generate more files. And we have generated, you know, GCDA, main dot gco, uh, GCNO and, and the, and the other, and other executables. And what we're going to do right now is do a gco on main dot C to see. And it basically says now there are now, 80% of the code is covered. Before we had 100%, now it says 80% out of the 25 lines of executable code. All right. And now what we're going to do is uh, it would have created a file called uh, main.c.gco, and we're just going to open it. It is a text file. And now let's see what happens. And now you can see that this new file, this new function that we wrote, this means that this when you, when you have a lot of these hash symbols, this basically means it's not executed. And that's how you can know whether your function has been executed, how many times it has been called, how many times it's been running, and whether it's not been executed at all. And if you know it's not been executed, and you could also say, hey, I've written a test script and I've not covered that particular line of function, right? So especially when you're doing unit testing and you want to know whether you're covering every part of your code, this could be give you, uh, this could actually help you figure out whether you've written a test case for that function or not. And this, and this way you can cover, you know, every part of your code and test coverage. That's really it. And that's what we want to show you today. Uh, I think it's a very handy tool for writing tests for just knowing whether your code, whether what we're writing is, is executed. And if it's not, you know, you can have better ana analysis and, and in-depth analysis. And from there, you know, you can make uh, the necessary changes. That's all there is to it. If you like this video, I highly recommend you to like this video, comment below, do subscribe to my channel. And, uh, you know, it means a lot to me. Thank you so much.